This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, residents gather to share their opinions on potential changes to city dog bylaws, and so far it's been a mixed bag. Bus users unite to fight for the reinstatement of one particular route, but did their request have any effect? And we find out why an Irish uprising is being celebrated locally and how we're connected to it. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. Concerned residents are speaking out about proposed changes to the Dunedin City Council's dog control bylaw. Over a two-day hearing, 60 people are scheduled to voice their thoughts on the rules, and so far submissions have been a mixed bag. Speaking out about animal control. Of the more than 300 submitters on proposed changes to local dog rules, a fifth have chosen to talk during a two-day hearing at the Dunedin City Council. Among them is the Dunedin branch of Forest and Bird, which wants stricter rules for the benefit of local wildlife. I in particular saw a number of instances of harassment of the sea lions by dogs that weren't under control. So we wanted to put that in, and in conjunction with others, we were concerned that the official distance that people should keep, um, keep from these endangered um, animals should be increased. She wants the distance extended from 10 metres to 20. Around 60% of all submitters oppose planned changes requiring all dogs be kept on leashes at council-owned sports grounds. It's a move that Opaho resident and dog owner Isla Little is very much against. I have a collie dog uh, and I think Dunedin is being forced into having becoming a city of small dogs because people um, can't get the exercise for the larger dogs. She says proposed restrictions on the number of areas where dogs are allowed off leashes is also a concern. She thinks that will negatively impact dog owners who can't travel outside their neighbourhoods to such dog friendly areas. My feeling is very much for the group of elderly people that I meet as I go along, including myself. Um, and we need that facility for our dogs. For a middle-sized dog that needs proper exercise, they can't get it on a leash. Ideally, Little would like to see the council take a more European approach, allowing dogs in more public areas, including the CBD. Any changes to the draft bylaw won't be made until all submissions are heard. The hearing continues tomorrow. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. The Bradkin foundry in central Dunedin has been sold after two years on the market. It's not clear whether all five of the company's titles behind the Dunedin railway station have been sold or to whom. Property agents are keeping tight-lipped about the deal, saying the owner must give permission for public comment. Bradkin's Australian headquarters has previously refused to comment about the premises and its local operations. It listed the Chewsley Street complex in early 2013 after leasing the Hillside Workshops foundry for five years. The company's industrial site had a collective capital value of $1.7 million around that time. Green Island bus users had their voices heard this morning as they called on the Otago Regional Council to reinstate a popular route. Community members presented a petition to the council asking for the return of a Brighton to Abbotsford service and the response was positive. Pulling up in style, this busload of Green Island residents have taken their petition to the Otago Regional Council in a bid to reinstate a local bus route. So the petition is asking for the reinstatement of a local route as well as the express route. So it's to really enable people from the Green Island Concord area to access South Dunedin and vice versa. 40 people travelled on the Otago Heritage bus along the former route, arriving at the council with the 400 strong petition in hand. Community members say the lost service is a necessity for people who rely on amenities in the area and can't drive. I think it's really crucial. There's a lot of people who've been negatively impacted by the changes. We've got people who can't get to school exams, we've got people who can't access the doctors and medical centres. 
When the 70 Brighton route was disestablished, an express service replaced it, travelling through Green Island to the city centre. Residents have spent months collecting signatures to have both of those in operation. The petition was well received at the Regional Council's meeting, where councillors commended the effort and community spirit. I'm hoping that they look at the solution that the community have come up with and that they act on it and they yeah, hopefully bring in the proposed changes. The Regional Council says it will undertake more consultation on the issue before making a decision about whether to resurrect the service. Uh, Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin well. News. Police are concerned about a recent increase in criminal activity around Ravensbourne. The latest incident occurred yesterday morning on Ravensbourne Road, where a commercial premises was broken into. A glass pane in the front door was smashed, and those responsible seemingly hurt themselves as blood drops were found throughout the scene. It appeared someone attempted to open the cash register, but only a jar of lollies was taken. That case follows several burglaries and thefts from parked cars in the area over the past few weeks. A conference is being held locally to commemorate an Irish uprising that happened a hundred years ago. The Easter Rising was launched by Irish Republicans to end British rule a century ago this week. And the local seminar is about showing New Zealand's connection to the event despite the geographic distance. Informing Kiwi residents about an Irish issue. This academic is looking at the significance of Ireland's Easter Rising to New Zealand. Yeah. Having the New Zealand part of a worldwide re-examination of the Easter Rising, which was a rebellion which took place in the middle of the First World War. The Easter Rising happened predominantly in Dublin in 1916, which led to the forming of the modern-day Irish Republic. This weekend will mark 100 years since the battle for independence began. A group of insurgents took over uh, some of the main buildings around Dublin uh, and basically challenged the British Empire in what was at the time uh, a blow for independence and for creation of a republic uh, in Ireland. The University of Otago's Irish Study Centre invited a wide range of academics to talk about different aspects of the conflict. Keynote speakers are covering the role of woman as well as the relationship between Ireland, the rebellion and empire. Local Irish experts are also using the conference to highlight the connection between New Zealand and the uprising as many Kiwis have Irish heritage. This is something that's not really well known as part of New Zealand's history but it's very very important because um, it answers to the origins and uh, particular political and cultural meanings for a significant section of the New Zealand population. The two-day conference at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum finishes today. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we chat with the Polytechnic's first emeritus professor and art lovers are in for a real treat, one that could benefit some of the city's young broadcasters. And every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Pallet fires are growing in popularity in Otago with people who want a clean and efficient form of home heating. The sight of a burning flame without the problems of chopping, stacking, and carting wood around is a winner. Pallet fires, so easy, so efficient. New Zealand Beeswax Limited are the quintessential beeswax woodware and beekeeping suppliers. From the amateur beekeeper to the commercial operator, New Zealand Beeswax Limited has the quantity to meet your needs. For great prices, great service New Zealand wide, contact New Zealand Beeswax Limited on 03 693 9189 or visit Mosgiel Mowers Plus can help you with products to make your garden maintenance jobs easier. Lawn mowers, ride-ons, chainsaws, line trimmers. Sales and service are our specialty. Mosgiel Mowers Plus. Phone 489-3572-22B Gordon Road, Mosgiel. Are you looking to add a new dimension to your home? A Christie's Glasshouse and Shed will add value to your property and increase your gardening pleasure. And 
can be easily ventilated during the day. A Christie's garden shed is a brilliant addition to your backyard, adding to your storage capacity. The great Kiwi glass house and shed come in all shapes and sizes, are manufactured in Dunedin and come in a range of nature inspired colour steel colours or metallic zinc alum finish. Choose the Kiwi shed that has stood the test of time. Choose Christie. The team at Caltex North care more about you than just putting fuel in your tank. They care about you and your family. At the Caltex Valley Workshop, the skilled service team care about your safety, extending the life of your car and helping you live more economically. There's a range of modern equipment to give comprehensive warrant of fitness checks and servicing to your vehicle. Come visit your only local in North East Valley and receive 10% off when you book your warrant and service together. That's your friendly Caltex Valley Workshop, 134 North Road or book online at caltexvalley.co.nz. For professional, reliable and approachable service where your dream kitchen design can become an affordable reality, contact the team at Kitchens for Less. Call 455 9973 or visit us online. Ecro Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs, visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 117766. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz Tune in on Thursday for Motorsport Night on Dunedin Television. Welcome back. Fonterra is planning to pay dividends earlier to shareholders in a bid to ease the financial suffering of dairy farmers. A global oversupply in the strong New Zealand dollar has been hard hitting for local producers. Fonterra is managing to increase its seasonal profit by converting as much milk as possible into higher earning products. It's forecasting a per share dividend of 40 cents for the current financial year. That's to be paid in instalments over the next five months with board approval. A 20 cent dividend will be paid in April and 10 cents each in May and August. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX50 has closed the day up six points. It's now at 6,670. The Dow Jones is down 41 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is down against all the currencies we follow. For the first time, Otago Polytechnic has awarded a top title to one of its former staff members. Professor Kyla Russell was recently made an Emeritus Professor at the Polytechnic's latest graduation ceremony and she joins us to talk about it. Good evening. Good evening. Congratulations. Thank you. What roles have you had at the Polytechnic? Um, early in the 80s or the tail end of the 1970s, I did part-time language teaching there and up in Central and then much later in the 90s I did some treaty training workshops there um, just part time and on call um, and then in the just 2001 or 2002 I think I went on as a part time lecturer in occupational therapy doing treaty workshops that the students were doing and I did that until the time of the application for the kaitohutohu arose. Did the accolade come as a surprise? The speed with which it happened certainly did, yes. Um, last year there were a couple of conversations when I was in a meeting so I felt obliged to leave. Um, but honestly I didn't really think, well certainly not for March if at all. So yes it was a lovely surprise, a pleasant mm. surprise. What does it mean to you? I think it's, it's as much about it belonging to everybody rather than just me and it, my career's kind of finished now so, but it's a, a very handy title to have mm. I think when you're Working with younger people applying for research grants, they always have to have someone older to nominate. So if you've got emeritus, then that usually means that you are considered a reasonably good researcher. So 
it helps in that sense. And it's good for the iwi. I think they were pretty happy mm. um, announcing it by 3.30 in the afternoon on the day. What are you focused on at the moment? Um, besides gardening? Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. <laughs> we just finished a group of us, of um, Māori and other Indigenous around the Pacific Rim on a um, biobanking piece of research. It was an HRC, one and a half million dollars, um, three year project. And that's just completed or all but completed. Um, some of those people then came here for a summer internship where we worked with young people who are working in health or, or training to be doctors or nurses in terms of um, what's appropriate treatment and what should be in the syllabus when you're training um, and other bits of research that are up and running. Mm. Do you think that your status might inspire others? We always hope that we'll be inspirational mm. but um, I think a couple of weeks back um, three young people from Pukachiraki applied for some research funding and that was to work with younger than them people so these ones are just about to do their degrees or just finishing and um, they re-established like the Tauta, Tauraka Waka in town, there's one at, at Karatani and so they made po and planted out over three weekends they worked and I was their cook so for me that was as inspirational being the cook mm -hmm. as it is being I guess someone that others aspire to follow perhaps. Mm. How do you hope you've made a difference through your teaching? I think if one student that I might not have met and have met knows how to be a good treaty partner um, and if all the Māori that I've met and worked with over the years know the same thing, then that will have been a, a significant something to leave behind, I think. Mm. What's been the biggest challenge for you? Working in a, a cultural position, even though it was a senior management and even though there was research with it, it is about culture and, and working in mainstream and trying to be the go-between between, between the Runaka's needs and hopes and aspirations and the person who pays your salary, you know, working in a leadership team role, was always kind of in a way a lonely position mm. because it was the first time it had been made so whoever succeeds at least will have someone to say what did you do when this happened. Yeah. But otherwise I, enjo I enjoyed most of it I think. Emeritus Professor Kyla Russell, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, it's time for a change at our railway station and we're on the streets to talk sugar. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. It works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new all black pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. Ecro Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 117766. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473 8252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Christie Glass Houses and Sheds, good to grow stuff in. The first choice for gardeners for over 100 years. Built to withstand extreme weather conditions and hard work. Full range of options available. Thomas Burns Street across the road from the railway station. Free call 0800 Allens. The team at Caltex North care more about you than just putting fuel in your tank. They care about you and your family. At the Caltex Valley Workshop, the skilled service team care about your safety, extending the life of your car and helping you live more economically. There's a range of modern equipment to give comprehensive warrant of fitness checks and servicing to your vehicle. Come visit your only local in North East Valley and receive 10% off when you book your warrant and service together. That's your friendly Caltex Valley Workshop, 134 North Road or book online at caltexvalley.co.nz. 
New Zealand Beeswax Limited are the quintessential beeswax woodware and beekeeping suppliers. From the amateur beekeeper to the commercial operator, New Zealand Beeswax Limited has the quantity to meet your needs. For great prices, great service New Zealand wide, contact New Zealand Beeswax Limited on 03 693 9189 or visit www.beeswax.co.nz. Pregnant, need to talk, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Welcome back. About 80 diverse artworks are being auctioned to raise money for the city's young broadcasters. Otago Access Radio is staging the event to generate support for its Youth Zone program, and that's got a strong history of success. Sizing up some creative canvases, Youth Zone programmers from Otago Access Radio are auctioning works by local and national artists to raise funds. That'll cover some of the costs of the community broadcasting endeavour for youth aged 8 to 22. So we've had people as young as 8 come in learning to use the console. Um, they've grown up over the last couple of years and they're running, con uh, running consoles and shows by themselves. Uh, we have people uh, who have just started university who want to get a bit of experience in broadcasting and producing shows and um, they get a different thing out of it. So it's quite a wide range of skills and a wide range of people that um, come in and broadcast. Some artists have donated their pieces outright, while others are taking a percentage of the sale price for themselves. That's something ORFM encourages as a win-win for all involved and a boost to the local art scene. Youth Zones proving to be a successful stepping stone for the wide-ranging cast of presenters, programmers and producers to date. We've actually had a couple of people go on to broadcasting school. It's um, something they could put on their application and it just gives them a bit of an edge over the other people that apply. Um, we've also, just personally, I've seen people grow in confidence and their skills as well, and it's really, it's really great to see. Last year's auction generated about $3,000 for Youth Zone after costs, and this one's expected to be even more valuable. Hundreds of young people have worked at the station learning basic on-air techniques and getting a feel for the studio. 11-year-old Olive Ward's been enjoying her involvement and is keen to continue. I have picked up some stuff on how to produce because some of the other kids do it um, and I'm hoping to be able to produce sometime. This is the third year of the auction which is growing in the number of artworks and bidders. It's hoped many residents will be generous in vying for the pieces to brighten their homes and offices while supporting youth education. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. The flower beds outside the Dunedin railway station are being replanted for the next season. Delta staff are putting in the winter crop, having removed a summer display last week. They're planning ornamental flowering kale as well as calendulas. That's expected to provide a colourful backdrop to the colder months. Red, gold, purple and orange will feature heavily in the garden once flowers bloom. Delta is contracted by the Dunedin City Council to maintain public flower beds. The railway station garden is replanted twice a year and after that they can come and do my garden. The United Kingdom is introducing a sugar levy on soft drinks in two years time to tackle the growing obesity crisis. That's something local health campaigners and researchers are pushing for in New Zealand. So our Word on the Street team asked members of the public if they think our government should introduce a sugar tax. 
No, I don't think they should introduce a sugar tax. I think they should have better education on why sugar is bad for you and maybe then work from there and then people have a less chance on buying sugar and getting obese. It's kind of just like finding, um, you know, like the education and kind of getting the building blocks first, but then at the same time, a tax will just deter people from having sugary drinks, just like taxes uh, deter people from smoking cigarettes. So. Like, I don't know, because I reckon they should bring it back because, or like, bring the prices down because, you know, we can't, like, buy all this healthy food, like, you know, this is why we're getting, like, you know, better, because, you know, you have all, like, you are, like, bringing, like, the sugars down, not the vegetables. Uh, no, I think it's 50, a 50-50 thing, yeah. It's, it's not a bad idea, but, yeah, 50-50. No, I don't think so because I think personally it's more about educating people on what they should do and like nutrition more and it's just like pricing up something that's sort of a necessity to people so poor people are just, are just going to be harder for everyone. No, because I'm a fan of sodas so I really don't want to pay more than two dollars for a can of a can of creaming soda. So. In my case I like sugary drinks so I'd rather prefer not to pay taxes but I guess it would be uh, smart because less obesity and health issues and stuff like that and it could probably be taxed and maybe go to the medical system to help prevent and healthy lifestyles and such. So. I think so because I think um, it helps like people make more health, decide to choose healthier choices um, as well as then if you can afford to like pay for sugar then I guess like the people that can afford it will still um, consume it. So. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. Residents are divided over proposed changes to local dog control, with submitters voicing their concerns at a city council hearing. A 400-strong petition is calling on the Otago Regional Council to reinstate a former public bus service through Green Island. And academics are making the, marking the centenary of the Easter Rising conflict in Ireland with a two-day conference involving a local perspective. It's time now to find out what's going to be in Thursday's Otago Daily Times. We're joined by Deputy Editor Craig Page. Good evening. Good evening, Rebecca. Yeah, we've got a concerning story out of South Dunedin with um, a couple of reports in recent days of young girls out that way being approached by strange men. Uh, one incident, a man tried to get a 12-year-old girl to get into his vehicle with him. Um, schools and police are aware of it. and the, uh, Schools are putting out newsletters just urging parents to be a bit careful. Uh, about sending their kids to school and wandering the streets and just to report anything suspicious as well uh, so that police can get on top of it pretty quickly. Um, Fairfield School, they got a bit more than they bargained for at a school camp this week. Um, last night they were uh, at Waiora Camp out at North Tyree and uh, playing spotlight in the evening ran into a wasp's nest and the hundreds of wasps uh, then started attacking children. Um, they ended up having to abandon their school camp and send everyone home late last mm, night. One child. Ideal. One child attacked 12 times, stung 12 Ooh. times, so uh, not a great way to end your school camp there. And we're looking ahead to, excuse me, Warbirds, uh, we interviewed Glenn Martin, a former Dunedin man of course who in, uh, invented the jetpack. Uh, we've had to talk to him about uh, where things are going with that uh, mm. development. That's tomorrow's ODT, thanks Craig. Thank you. Time now for local weather. This weather report proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorn Sportsville. And here's today's city view, it's taken of autumn leaves. Around the city at 3 o'clock today is central city, 17 degrees, 18 at the gardens, 21 for the Tyree. To the situation, an active trough of low pressure is moving over the country. It will be followed by a colder southwest flow. An anticyclone will move over the country at the weekend. And Dunedin tonight, a period of rain with an overnight low of 11. Tomorrow, showers in the morning, clearing during the afternoon with sunny periods developing. Southwesters easing, and on Friday, becoming fine and sunny with southwesters. And uh, fishing's looking great tomorrow. Tides, uh, low tide is just before midday. That's local news for Wednesday. See you tomorrow. Bye. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.